One of the most fun things to do in a game like Elden Ring is build crafting, whether you're doing PvE, PvP, challenge runs, or cosplays, but more often than not, people will look to online resources to help them decide what build that they should run, whether they're looking for some fun theme, or if they want to try out a new build style. Hi, my name is Rust. I'm an Elden Ring content creator with an emphasis on PvP. In this video, I'll be helping you get a better understanding of not only knowing what talismans you should be using, but also how you should manage them during a fight to get the best results. This video is mostly oriented toward dueling and PvP, but if you're a PvE enjoyer, then I encourage you to hang out anyway, as a lot of this information will likely apply to you as well. Some concepts that I'll cover in this video are invasions versus duels, in terms of effective health versus burst damage, the three main health thresholds, hard swaps, exaltations, loadout, and situational swaps. Starting from the top, it's important to keep in mind that everyone's loadout might look a little different. These factors range from your own build, the players that you're fighting against, and some of the more subtle differences like your playstyle and your efficiency with hard swaps and your environment. In a dual setting, you should be running three different sets of talismans that you want to swap between depending on your health threshold in order to maximize your damage and defenses. This isn't as applicable in invasions or PvE content where your effective health is less important than your potential burst damage. In these environments, your health pool is largely tied to the number of flasks that you have available and your ability to drink without getting punished for it. From an invasion standpoint, you always have half the resources of your host and the added pressure of cooperators that can peel pressure allowing them to heal a lot more easily than you can. It takes a lot more effort for you to get a safe heal off than it is for your opponent. What this means is, in most cases, you'll lose a battle of attrition unless your opponent is making repeated blunders. So damage becomes a lot more valuable in these scenarios where you want to quickly eliminate the teammate of the host and manage a 1v1 a lot more comfortably. There's three sets of talismans that correspond to your different health thresholds, being 100%, under 90%, and under 20%. At your 100% threshold, the most optimal loadout is pretty consistent with some minor tweaks depending on personal preference. You want to be running Urge of Favor plus 2, Crimson Amber plus 2, Ritual Shield, and Ritual Sword talismans, which give you your highest boost to your effective health pool and a substantial damage boost from your Ritual Sword. Even after you take damage, you can usually swap off your HP boosting talismans to bring yourself back to 100% HP, giving you access back to your ritual talismans. But swapping all four talisman slots in the middle of a fight can be pretty difficult to manage for most players. Great Jar's Arsenal is a talisman that can work on any build and easily find its place as a stable fourth talisman slot, making swapping a lot easier to manage. In this case, Urtree Favor is the least valuable to keep and should be given up first, since it gives you the lowest amount of boost to your effective health. And if 3 talismans is still too much to manage, the next one that I'd recommend giving up is the Sword Talisman. The reason for this is that the Shield Talisman will always consistently reduce the damage taken from a first hit, however the Sword guarantees nothing, and requires you to play flawlessly. In terms of order for these talismans, you want to be running your HP talismans on your first and second slots, and your ritual or utility talismans on your third and fourth slot. I'd like to make it clear that in almost all cases, I think that the Great Jar's Arsenal is optimal to run on your fourth talisman slot, and a three talisman swap setup is the best to run because it allows you better stat distribution into your primary damage stat, assuming that you have reasonable poison in your armor. After you've reached under 90% HP, and you can't reasonably recover your health fast enough to get back to full, it's time to swap to a more consistent set of talismans which give you a boost to your primary source of damage or improve your effective health. This varies heavily on your build and your matchup and there's a few good rules to follow. Power stance weapons or those with multi-hit work well with a combination of Godskin Swirling Cloth, Rotten Wing Insignia, and Melison's Prosthesis, which do in fact stack together. In general, if you're using weapons that have access to pierce damage like guitars, spears, or lances, then you generally want to be running Spear Talisman, which takes priority over your other damage talismans. So to break this down, if you're running a 4 talisman swap with fast weapons, you'll want to be running Godskin, Rotten Wing, Millicent, and a free optional slot that works well for something like Bulgut's Talisman. On a 3 swap setup, you'll make the best use of the Great Jar's Arsenal as your static 4th slot, and you'll want to be running Godskin, Rotten Wing, and your third will either be Bulgo's or Millicent's Prosthesis, depending on your situation. If you're playing against something that has consistent poise break like Great Swords or Colossal Weapons, then there's generally very little reason for you to be using Bulgo's Talisman for the poise boost, and you're better off running something with damage instead. If you're using Thrust Weapons, then a 4,000 swap setup will run Godskin, Spear, Rotten Wing, and Bulgo's, and a 3,000 swap setup will run Spear, Rotten Wing, and either Bulgo's or Godskin on your third slot and Great Jar's Arsenal. 
Slower weapons like heavy thrusting swords, great weapons, and colossal weapons won't benefit as much from multi-hit talismans because even if you manage to get up one or two stacks of damage from them, it will be very rare and difficult to maintain the uptime of that buff, and you're better off running something that offers more consistent returns. Alexander Shard and Claw Talisman are both great options for slower weapons, as a lot of them rely heavily on jump attacks, or Ashes of War as a strong damage source. If you're using utility ashes like Raptors of the Mist or weapon buffs, then the Claw Talisman will obviously do you more favors here. Weapons like Colossal Greatswords, Heavy Thrusting Swords, and Claymores will get a lot of benefit out of a Spear Talisman, but for all the other weapons out there that don't have access to Pierce Damage, you'll actually get pretty decent returns from a Defensive Talisman, or what some people have been experimenting with recently, Green Turtle Talisman, for easier stamina management. Due to the slower speeds of these weapons, they generally benefit a lot out of the Bull Goats Talisman, allowing them to trade more consistently. So, with these types of weapons, you might run a combination of Claw or Alexander Shard, Spear or Green Turtle Talisman, a defensive talisman like Dragon Crest Shield, and Bulgo's Talisman. There's quite a lot of options I know, but it really comes down to what weapon you're trying to use and what you're matched up against. With weapons like Heavy Thrusting Swords, I'm always running a combination of both Claw and Spear Talisman with Bulgo's and Great Jars Arsenal, or Alexander Shard over Great Jars when I'm running a 4 talisman swap setup. With something like Knight's Great Sword, I might run Claw, Alexander Shard, Bulgo's, and either a defensive talisman or Great Jars Arsenal. Casters tend to run hybrid builds which make use of physical weapons and projectiles, like having a Moon Veil to support an Int build or a Coated Sword to support a Faith build. But if you're focusing your primary damage output on being related to your spellcasting, then you'll absolutely want to be making use of the two talismans that boost the flat damage of whatever school of magic that you're using. For the third slot, there's a few options that you can make use of depending on the type of spells that you're casting. But if you're not meeting your virtual deck soft cap to reach your max casting speed, then Radicon's icon is pretty much a must. But if you're happy with your cast speed, then you can always run another option in your third slot in the form of Godfrey's Icon or Alexander's Shard if you're running a weapon like Moonveil for supportive damage. On the last slot, you can always run your static slot with Great Jar's Arsenal or the aforementioned options if you haven't already taken out. I've laid out an entirely separate section of this video to talk about Exaltation Talismans. Kindred of Raw Exaltation is easily the most powerful talisman that you have access to no matter what build you're running, as it enhances all types of damage whether it's physical or elemental and it's incredibly easy to make use of, even if you don't have access to status on your weapon, since you have access to Rope Fetid Pots, which will proc poison on yourself in 2, which is incredibly free and immediately gives you a 20% boost to all sources of damage. On top of that, you can stack a Mushroom Crown for even more damage. In every one of these builds, Kindred of Rot is best in slot and never needs to be swapped off. So in terms of your usual 4 Talisman setup, you would simply trade off any one of the 4 Talismans based on your preference and have that be as a 4th static slot. When you start the fight, proc poison on yourself, cleanse with the Ballas, and then swap off one of your HP Talismans to get immediately back up to your 100% threshold. That's it. Immediately just have a disgusting increase in damage, and if you don't want to self-proc, then you can always just have Poison Mist on a weapon, which provides insane hyper armor and can proc poison consistently, even if you just land a phantom hit due to high latency. If your opponent decides to cleanse their poison, then that just means that you get to proc exaltation once more and poison them a second time, and if they don't cleanse it, then it's guaranteed damage. There's no downside either way. Lord of Blood's Exaltation was nerfed, but it still gives very good, consistent damage. But self proccing with Seppuku is very costly. So this really only works well on a build that runs Arcane or uses Roped Grease and weapons with a neat bleed like a strength builder on Spike Cestus. The plus side of this is that you can reapply your bleed proc and you don't have to wait for a poison timer to run down before you can reapply the buff. On top of that, nothing is stopping you from just running both Exaltations with an occult infused poison mist weapon with a neat bleed. Ah! 
After you've reached under 20% HP, it's time to make another swap to your next set of talismans. If there's any point where you should at least try and get in the habit of swapping talismans, it's here, and you'll want to be swapping 3 air talisman slots no matter what the build. Blessed Dew, Blue Feather, and Red Feather are best in slot at the south range. At the south range, you can likely survive 1 or 2 more hits thanks to the damage reduction of Blue Feather talisman, and Blessed Dew will stop you from getting chipped down by fan daggers as long as you're blocking. Your last talisman will either be your static slot, if you're already running a 3 talisman setup, or some other damage enhancing talisman like Kindred of Rot or Spear Talisman. So now that you've got these three sets of talisman swaps that you need to make, how do you go about managing your swaps in the middle of a fight? For starters, when you're in your menu, you can use the left and right bumpers to quickly shift between each talisman slot. So what I like to do is get into my first talisman slot, tab down once, X to accept, and then right bumper, and repeat. It's easy, straightforward, and requires very little effort for my two little brain cells to manage in the middle of a fight. I tend to set up my talismans where that's literally all I ever have to do for most situations, because I don't want to get locked in my menu looking around for what talisman I need to swap to and risk getting punished for not paying attention to my opponent. This is a skill and takes a lot of time and practice to get used to. So, if you're having a hard time at first, don't feel bad. If you get super comfortable with making these swaps, then you'll want to make the change to your left and right triggers to swap instead of the down input, which makes it so that you don't have to claw grip and you have more immediate access to other swaps that you can use to adapt to whatever situation that you're dealing with. With this loadout, you have 8 different options you can swap to as an adaptive swap at any point in the fight. Your triggers give you immediate access to your primary swap, and you can use the D-pad to make adaptive swaps. You'll notice here that the 8 options around my primary swap are always the same, so I can make the same adaptation consistently without getting lost in my menu. On that note, let's talk about adaptive swaps, specific talismans that you need to have easy and quick access to for better matchups against whatever your opponent might be using. First and foremost, by far the most important talisman that you need to have easy access to is your resistance talismans. If you get into a match where your opponent is using a Ripple Halberd, you need to make an immediate swap over the Clarifying Horn Charm so you have a better matchup against the Sleep. I can't stress how important these talismans are and you absolutely need to have these available. I keep these on the left side of my first swap so that all I have to do is sacrifice a small amount of HP for the added resistance which will ultimately help me a lot more than the small health boost. Some other talismans that are vitally important are your hammer and your great shield talismans. If you don't want to bother using a shield at all, then forget about the great shield talisman, but I can tell you that a great shield with barricade shield can help you deal with a lot of unfavorable matchups, or simply just deal with the bullet hell that comes from mages. Hammer talisman, on the other hand, is more necessary as a swap, as it prevents you from getting checked by shield poke setups, despite their nerf, if played well, can completely invalidate a lot of builds. And of course, you should always keep the exaltation talismans on you at all times, even if you aren't planning on running them yourself. If you see your opponent running a poison or bleed setup, then you can swap one of these over for a very strong buff that makes your opponent's build work in your favor. Now, from a more PvE and invasion focused approach, there's four talismans that you want to have somewhere in inventory to use if you have the space to do so, being your seed talismans and taker's cameo and ancestral spear's horn to provide you some HP and FP on death. Like I said, these are very situational and more focused on making the resource discrepancy that you may face in an open world environment more manageable. 
If a host or phantom kills a PvE mob, we'll get your resources back from those deaths. The seed tiers can just effectively increase the amount of FP and HP that you get back from the flasks, thereby improving your effective health pool. At the end of the day, in an invasion, you will lose a battle of attrition against hosts that has twice as many resources as you do, and same with a phantom who has the support of a teammate to make up for whatever mistakes that they make themselves. If you're smarter with your flask usage, you can ultimately win in these situations, but assuming that your opponents are dumb is the fastest way to get yourself killed or just in a bad situation. Finally, the last two talismans that can really help you in PvE or invasion environments are the Concealing Veil and the Furled Fingers Trick Mirror, which help you disguise yourself in an environment and potentially give you an edge over a gank if you manage to get yourself hidden. There's a few gimmick setups that you can do with things like Roar Medallion and Axe Talisman that give you one-shot potential on Charge R2s from Ashes of War that have a Roar buff on certain weapons. You can run Double Arrow Talisman if you're focusing on a bow build, or you can use Blue Dancer Charm and Crucible Feather Talisman if you're a light rolling scumbag. But these types of builds are more incredibly niche, and they don't really have a place to be talked about in a video that is more targeted at the meta level builds optimized to be versatile and adaptable. If there is a talisman that you were wondering about and wondering why I didn't bring it up, then it's probably because it's not very good and not really worth talking about. I've been seeing a lot of things come up about different things like scorpion charms, sore seals, and hell even like the twin blade talisman, and to put it simply, it's just not worth it. There's better options that you can make use of for more consistent benefits. But that does it for this video, thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments, and I'll do my best to get around to it. I'll see you in the next one. Video soon, TM? Fine, Rust Bucket. Make a video on it then and call me out specifically. Mr. Rust Bucket, if you're so smart about talisman swaps, talisman grids, swap grids, whatever you want to call them, you silly gamer. That's right, I'm looking at the camera now. I'm not looking at the, I'm not looking at the name. Here we go. I got one. I'm mad at you, Rust Bucket. I think you're bad at the video game. <laughs>